All right, Mike and Hope, please take it away. All right, Hope, are you on? I am. Are you starting? I'm ready. Okay. Well, this this is our intro, but since yes. we just got introduced, I'll uh, I'll take us to the next slide. So. Um, for our Ask for One Million Cups, we're really just interested in understanding how to take this to the next step. So we've created this collaboration that we're going to talk to you about. And we're looking for thoughts and ideas from you guys on additional places and, and organizations to license with or institutional associations that might be helpful to us. And some of the categories are listed at, at, at the bottom of the list. So with that, let's, uh, let's take it away. Wonderful. Welcome to Girls in the Spotlight and Color Pocket in a Colorful Collaboration. So I'm Hope Hartman. I'm the Executive Director of Girls in the Spotlight. And many of you know my co-founder, who is a regular at One Million Cups, Denny Osuga. And I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse into our first year because we really kicked off our after-school enrichment program in January of 2019. We started at one school with 18 girls, most of whom are pictured on this slide. And then that summer, we, were, we actually kicked off five week-long summer programs. And what happened by August is we had requests to be in 11 of our local schools in the Poudre School District. So uh, I had to really ramp things up quite quickly. I grabbed a few volunteer coaches to help me deploy programs into eight schools. And then by November, realizing that the growth was going to continue, I hired 12 interns from CSU coming across three departments. And by December, a One Million Cups member insisted that I connect with the Color Pocket team due to the nature of activities that they were, that our girls do in the clubs and said, you have to meet this team and told me about three times. And that's how I got connected to the Color Pocket team. Uh, hang on. So Color Pocket uh, is an idea that was hatched back way back in 2016. And having just started a small um, prototyping and development company, uh, we decided to take the idea on. And the idea came at a restaurant when Delane said, I wish I had some way to portably carry all my coloring equipment so when I want to color I can do coloring on the go. So as a initial project Brain Dragons the little company that I had started decided hey we'll take this project on because it'll be easy it's a consumer product it should be no big deal and uh, two and a half years later and over 30 prototypes we actually got somewhere close to being what we wanted to do. Um, and then finally in the summer of 2019 we got to the final product although some early adopters took it up in the Christmas season of 2018. So one of the things that happened over the summer was that we went to a couple of trade shows and one of the things we realized is that a way to think about the color pocket in addition to just something for the consumer market was that it could be an institutional product as well because the color pocket is really a platform for content. So once we had achieved the design of the basic idea of you know, coloring implement and a lap desk and the whole thing, we decided we wanted to try to find some institutional partners that we could work with. And as Hope said, uh, sometime earlier in December last year, we were uh, pushed together and, and that's where we are today. So just to give you a little glimpse of that was then back in 2019, there was a picture of the, the half of that group of 18 girls uh, surrounding this big poster and coming up with power words. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit of the, the why behind Girls in the Spotlight. I am passionate about helping girls find their voice. And our mission is inspiring and empowering girls to become world-class leaders. So everything we do through the nonprofit, a little different from for-profits, is we're mission-driven. And so it's how we fulfill that mission. So we have a lot of different activities where we draw on the disciplines of creative and performing arts, leadership, and entrepreneurship. One of our activities is about power words and the words that we use and how that can, you can empower yourself, you can empower others. So we were doing this, you know, thing on a big poster with markers and girls grouped around a table. It was kind of cumbersome. And then we transitioned to girls having in their personal journals. But I found a lot of commonality in the words that kept cropping to the top. And that's when I could really pursue the conversation with Color Pocket of how do we create a systematic approach so it's consistent to all the girls going through this experience. 
So one of the great things about working with Hope is that she allowed us uh, through our collaboration and our back and forth to help develop sort of a process that we, you know, obviously will keep refining into the future. But as part of that, we needed to onboard and understand exactly what Girls in the Spotlight was all about. Um, and then try to figure out how we translate that into content that's appropriate for our platform and meets the needs that she has in terms of developing the power words. So we worked through uh, a couple lists of the words that she had developed and started working on custom content and uh, Delane, our chief colorist, um, created these awesome cards and the whole intent was to create uh, a set of engaging content around the powerful stuff that Hope was doing with Girls in the Spotlight so that we could enable the kind of program that she wants to do. This gives us a model moving forward for working with other institutional things in terms of educational content or um, specific content targeted, say, to a museum or other things like that. So we're pretty excited about how that's all turned out. And of course, the, the cards are awesome. Uh, and we, we love that the girls love them. The girls do love them. And so what's happen happening now, uh, we're online with our programs. We had to move very quickly because this all went down during spring break and everybody was away. And then schools announced that spring break was extended by a week, but I knew it was happening because I had been in a different state and I knew we would not be back in school for the rest of the school year. So we quickly told everyone we're going online and we are still able to uphold our pillars, which all revolve around communication, creativity, and connection. So going online didn't change any of that. So this is one picture of one club. We just completed our spring season last week. So we were running clubs Monday through Thursday and our largest group was up to 15 girls. And you, you can see they have the color pockets. So today we can now service girls from any PSD school. They don't have to be those eight physical schools that we were going to. We can also extend this to girls beyond Fort Collins. So we are testing that out and we have a girl uh, from a different state with us, the new season that just kicked off yesterday. We want color pockets for all. This has become a core part of our program. Again, the girls love it. So we will continue that for anybody who does this anywhere because we believe we are now positioned for a national scale. So the takeaway here is One Million Cups is the e-harmony e for entrepreneurs who want collaboration. And just to bring this all back, I believe Denny Osuga is the Kevin Bacon of the situation because all of these partnerships go back to him. So thanks to One Million Cups. How thank fantastic is that? Thank you guys. Yeah, Virtual awesome. round of applause. Yes. Excellent. Um, I love hearing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have some asks up here. Take a quick look at those. And then I'm going to ask uh, Mike to stop sharing his screen so we can have a conversation with everybody. Uh, who has questions or feedback? Um, and just for me to start off, uh, Hope and Mike, how long has this partnership been going on? When did this start? I miss, I, I didn't quite catch that part. December of 2019. Perfect, okay. Natalie, I'll let you kick us off. Uh, yeah, so that was awesome. Great, thank you for, for doing that. Uh, one question and then one suggestion. Um, so you mentioning about licensing. So what are you looking to license exactly? So the, sort of the combination of your program with the Collar Pocket as mm -hmm. an offering to different organizations where they take your program with the Collar Pocket coming with it and then, then they can deploy it to whomever? So I think Mike and I both have licensing models in mind. Uh, Mike, maybe I'll address it first, and then if you want to say yeah. something about Color Pocket, but that's absolutely right. We, I have a three-year curriculum established with different yeah. themes for each season, and then basically the supply kit, which now an integral part of that is the Color Pocket. So people would license the curriculum, the supplies would come from our local suppliers, and they would go through training. Okay. Yeah, and for us, the, um, the thing is that you know, if we treat it as a platform and let's say we want to go to institution for mm -hmm. us, the best thing, of course, is to own the content. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we want to work in collaboration like we did with Hope, then we actually are treating girls in the spotlight as if they're one of our external artists. So mm -hmm. they get a commission in addition to each sale um, okay. as part of the collaboration. And so whatever licensing deal the girls in the spotlight has, um, if somebody else collaborates with us, um, on a different kind of thing, we'll do that same kind of arrangement. That's what I meant earlier when I said it's such a, a nice thing to have a model created with someone right. 
you know, that we can work closely with right from the beginning so that we understand how to yeah. do that. So the question is, have you approached or do you have, so I have a contact at the Denver Museum of Arts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you do, but if, if you don't, let me know. I mean, I, he's a CIO, so it's more IT, but um, not a huge organization. So if you're interested, I can sure. potentially reach out and see whether there's any contacts that can be established there. Right. From our, from our perspective, you know, the kinds of places that we think museums are a great one, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, especially gift shops. So for instance, right. let's say gift shops at a zoo, right? Mm -hmm. We create a zoo basic content mm -hmm. and things like that, which we've done. We've got a couple of zoos like Pueblo Zoo down in South Colorado. Okay. Uh, has some color yeah. pockets. So yeah, I, I would love to have that contact because, yeah. you know, Hope was the first sort of institutional collaborator. Mm -hmm. We're we're part of a group of hospital gift shops, which yeah. they don't need specific content per se, mm -hmm. but you can sort of see how those things sure. emerge yeah. in the future. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out and hope outside just a little blurb and then I can send it on to my contact. Thank you. Okay. More on the eHarmony piece. Excellent. Thank you, Natalie. Um, and hope I will say some of your royalty money is coming from me because I sent the Girls in the Spotlight <laughs> deck to my nieces with their color pockets, uh, and it was fabulous. Marcus, what's your comment, question, feedback? Um, unless I, I thought I saw on your guys' slide, uh, unless I was wrong, that you guys are looking for partnerships with schools, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, the at least from my perspective, the first pass is at the after school programs with girls in the spotlight. Uh, but in the future, one of the things at least we're thinking from a platform point of view is educational content. So we could imagine, for sure. instance, an art history class might have a deck of cards that they could color various things that they're going through as topics uh, in the course of a semester or something. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I saw that right before I mentioned this. I actually have a twofer uh, con uh, <laughs> contacts for you. Um, my uh, my parents actually are respectively a retiring superintendent and a res and a retiring K six teacher. Um, so I'll share your guys. I'll share their contact information in the chat, and Love they're it. done at the end of the school year. Um, so dad might have some thoughts for you from Absolutely. the minutia of kind of the yep. more business administration side of it. And I mean, mom's been in the classroom for 30 yeah, years. Don't ask, your mom, Started like that. Don't ask your mom like that. Right. <laughs> for us, for us, that's one of the less fleshed out components. I mean, in, in the case of girls in the spotlight, we have a strong curriculum. We already know exactly what's going to be beneficial to that curriculum because Hope told us we don't have those kinds of contacts from a color pocket point of view in these other kinds of institutions. So this would be great to have someone where we can pick their brain and say, you know, we imagine that the color pocket only has utility up to a certain age. We want to understand that. We under, sure. want to understand in that age range, what are the content items that are the most beneficial to being interactive with coloring? Obviously you could have information associated on the back of the card and other things like that. So, um, all following up along those lines, my only other thought or suggestion would be just using the, the, the physical color pocket. You've got the drawer there to stow um, a variety of different instruments or items. I feel like yep. maybe even beyond color, uh, beyond colored pencils um, in an educational context, I was actually kind of thinking about um, back when I was in high school, like when we went out for physics class and did the astronomy, did the sundial stuff, mm -hmm. or uh, like in high school bio, um, we did like pond water samples and the clipboards were a hassle because you were always <laughs> struggling with, you know, one item or another. The fact that right. for high school science, they have a self-contained, um, you've got a platform to write on and you also yep. have all, everything you need inside that drawer. Um, to do like that's, observations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super insightful, Marcus. We, we've, we've, I've talked to you a little bit in the past about the fact that we thought about other kinds of drawers, right? So the nice thing about the platform is we can replace a drawer. So we could take right. the pencil drawer out and replace it, as you say, with a science kit. We, we hadn't gone that direction yet, but I love the idea. We thought about a uh, watercolor drawer, right? Or a crayon drawer or uh, you know, uh, sort of charcoal drawer, things like that, pastels. So this is a great addition to that concept moving forward. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. I'll drop uh, mom and dad's contact info in the chat for you along with a little context. Um, okay, so cool. I'm going to wrap this one up um, because we've got a bunch of hands waiting and I want to make sure we get all of it in before we need to kick over to our second presentation. So Brian. 
What feedback do you have? So I also am going to play matchmaker slightly. Mike, <laughs> you should definitely talk to Harrison because I think some of your projects may go together. And the hmm. question I would have- Harrison, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> The question I would have for both of you is, you're interested in institutions. Are you interested more in it, using the schools as an example, as the teacher as institution or the school district as institution? I hope what's your thought for your programs? Okay, this is a little loaded. Uh, um... Our, our local district is a district made up of a bunch of individual schools that operate in silos. So I have to market to each individual principal at every school in our district. So there is not a district wide decision made here locally. I don't believe that it's the same for districts outside of our local district. Well, it yeah, depends. For our, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for our, from our side of it, um, you know, we're trying to understand what the implications of that are. And one of the things is it's a, it's a cart and horse kind of situation because do we create content first with some notion of a lack of expertise that we try to sell or do we say to the school district or to the teacher, you know, here's this thing. No, what we hope of course, is that there's some, um, this, this conversation is about getting a contact to where we can learn some of those things to your point, Brian, because it's, it's unclear. Obviously for us, the best thing would be to have a gigantic school district in Dallas, Texas buy for every classroom and suddenly we're done. See you guys, I'm on the beach. I met William Oliver's by the way, for those of you who are wondering what I want to open first, it's, it's here I am, so. Greg, your comment. Uh, first open, uh, Mike, I th great presentation. I like the product. I like what you're doing, especially with the girls in the spotlight. Um, it seems like with the power words that you center around uh, educational piece, centering on that word and teaching around that, I would assume. Um, some of my questions were answered previously. With specific schools, do you have a list of the 11 elementary schools that you're working with in PSD? I do. Is that something you could share with us? So, I mean, I don't want to double dip if, if it's people you already know, but. Sure, no, I don't mind sharing. Um, I'll, it's just, I'll see if I can remember them off the top of my head. So we have Timnath, Zach, Bacon, Laurel, Johnson. Hang on one second. So when I mentioned 11, we didn't deploy into all 11. Um, O'Day, Linton, what are the other ones? Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head, but I have all this documented and I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. It was okay. the principals who, I sent proposals to every principal in our district. And it was the ones who responded or the ones where parents said, you need to have this program in your school after they experienced our summer program. Okay, so yeah, Bennett and Bauer have connections there. And so I'd be oh, happy to get you. Bennett and Dunn, you. thank you. <laughs> Bennett and Dunn as well. Okay, so with Bauer I have a connection and then, um, also in another school district, it uh, sounds like specifically you had to talk to individual principals, but a superintendent in Eaton School District, if you wanted to at least approach, happy to share that information. Thank you, Greg. I would love that. You bet. Good job. Great. Thank you, Thank you Greg. Stephen, your comment. Um, yeah, just real quick. Uh, have you guys, when you're talking about working with institutions, have you guys talked to uh, Pretty Brainy? at all you know they work with stem and and uh have you been able to coordinate with it or have you talked to them to get any information or how see how they've been able to do it I, so i can speak to that so years ago um i actually ran a program called biz girls which focused solely on entrepreneurship and heidi and i had several conversations um so I, yes i'm familiar with pretty brainy and i know some of the schools she has partnered with and she typically is working with older girls. So I work with third, fourth, and fifth graders. All right. And uh, our last question on this presentation, Janelle. Um, I, I'll go as quickly as I can. Hope, I would really like to connect with you and tell your story. I'd like to do that either on a volunteer basis or through our agency, because I really have a passion for what you're talking about doing. The other suggestion that I have, and you might have already looked under this um, stone, but Otterbox 
foundation does a lot of um, curriculum work and I might be able to help you with that in terms of getting an introduction there. Do you, are you already working with them? I am and I've received grants from them. Okay. They're wonder they are wonderful. Thank Good, you. enough said on that. Michael, I just was wondering um, if, we've if you've tapped the seniors market, faith-based markets, oncology wings, and I have a connection with the nutrition services department in Douglas County. They do a huge, um, they also are connected with a company called NutriSlice. They do a lot of um, educational outreach to teach kids about nutrition. And I think this would be a really good um, opportunity with them. Um, it's a large, well-funded district. And I did a lot of um, uh, promotions through their Chef's Move to School program. So let's connect on that. Um, sure, yeah. And I just have one question really quick, if Jana will give me the time. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so on your thing, Michael, on, on the creation of the kits, I'm, I, I know a little bit how you guys are um, producing the content in-house. What's a short run? What's the shortest run that makes you profitable in terms of um, in terms of going forward with a liaison with somebody? Ooh, good question. Uh, that's a that's a really good question, and the short answer is we don't know for sure. In the sense that um, there's a certain amount of effort that's tied into doing the content creation, right? And in, in the case with Hope, we just collaborated on that as part of our learning experience. So we didn't really set an expectation of sort of a development cost per se for that. So that's just rolled into the package, which I think is how we'd like to do it unless it's some extensive curriculum where we'll probably need to bring in an expert to help us do that, I would assume, whether that's with the institution we're trying to partner with or not. Um, and then as far as the program goes, you know, for us, it's basically uh, somewhere between a, a retail sale and a wholesale sale, right? So that's where we've tried to establish some sort of pricing uh, on a nominal scale. Okay. All right. So maybe we can connect later. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. That, that would be great. Um, and, you know, this is our first step. So to the first, first part of your question, we haven't reached out to any institutions other than we've donated to St. Jude's and, and we've donated to some senior centers, color pockets, you know, just um, as, as part of what we do on a day-to-day -day oh. basis. Devin. But we've, not, but we've not reached out to them. Could you please come make? Okay. Okay. Um, well, we can touch base on some of those and see if that would be helpful and hope yeah. I'll message you to get your contact information. I have Michael's. Great. All Thank right. You. Thank you wow. very much, Mike and Hope. Really appreciate it. Very Thank excited you, about the work that you guys are doing. Love hearing that uh, One Million Cups has been helpful in getting this. And uh, I know there's some comments in the chat box that you guys are probably going to want to focus on. I'm going to move us to our second presentation at this point uh, so that Stephen has his time to get his feedback and that sort of thing. So I want to introduce Stephen from Beyond 50%, who is also uh, famous as Scuba Steve, uh, which is how at moments his Starbucks baristas refer to him. But Steve has been teaching scuba for a few years now. Uh, so I'm curious, Steve, if you're actually wearing flippers today or are you wearing shoes for your presentation? So if you'll take it away for us, Steve. I, I am actually wearing shoes today. Um, in fact, that was actually a big thing I did last week. I, I was wearing my slippers to work and I got to the point where I said, okay, I got to get more formal or get not formal, but back to regular work. And I, so I ended up starting wearing real shoes, but um, I, I am wearing uh, regular shoes, but I do have several sets of, of flippers. Um, so another fun fact, only because uh, it was brought up already, I'm also a failed musician, uh, but that did actually lead to my first business. So it was a, a failure from a music perspective, but, uh, uh, the start of my, my entrepreneurial journey. So that's kind of fun. Um, all right. So let's get to here, sharing my screen. All right. So uh, the ask today is, uh, have, is the message that I'm trying to, to deliver clear? And also have I identified uh, the value of what, what Beyond 50% brings to the table? Um, and then, of course, any, any other thoughts or... or uh, uh oh, why am I not going? Oh, you have to click the actual thing. Okay, know the tool. 
All right. So Beyond 50% provides business owners uh, like you with consulting that enables you to implement new business processes or improve existing ones so you can realize your personal vision of success. And that's so, okay, we all have vision, mission, statements, whatever. What does that really mean to a business owner? Uh, we provide expertise so that you can build new elements to your business or fix things that you've identified as problematic. And so that just sort of sums it up in a, in a little bit of a more, more clean way. Uh, who do we work with? We work with small business owners and startup founders. So sole proprietorships, partnerships, S-corps, uh, typically one to 25 employees, uh, that kind of mostly local. Uh, now, of course, we can do Zoom and all of that, so we could broaden the, the, the scope of customer base. But I, I do have to admit, I like uh, meeting people. I think someone was talking earlier about, not, uh, about the, the problems small business owners are going to have not being able to get out into the community. And I, I think that's an important aspect of providing consulting services. So while you can do some work virtually, uh, uh, I, I try to, to keep the scope of my work uh, here in Northern Colorado area. Uh, so I started in 2015, I started Beyond 50% to improve the odds of small business success. Um, I'm not really sure what triggered it for me. I've been a business person all my life, but, but uh, it, you know, by, by trade, not just by, by accident or whatever. But the, uh, at some point in 2015, I realized the, the real scope of what it means when 50% of businesses go out of business in five years. And what does it mean? And 10 years later, it's, it's 75%, and then it's 87.5%. So 15 years down the road, 87% of businesses don't survive. And, and it's heartbreaking. So I, I wanted to, to provide an opportunity for business owners to get the information that they need to succeed. It's not always, in, in fact, I think usually not about products and services falling flat. It's about business practices that need to be published, that need to be available to people that, and, and need to be available to entrepreneurs before the problems really happen. So uh, the, the way we do that is through uh, publishing uh, action-oriented content. I'm all about finding ways to create action, not I don't do 30,000 foot view summary statements and all of that. And, and there's a place for those things, but for small business owners, it's about getting stuff done on the ground. And, uh, and then having, so we publish that content and then also uh, my own expertise in business management and, and operations. And I have referral or expertise and resources in marketing, accounting, and uh, the legal environment, which are all very important to, to business. So the services we offer, uh, we have the Up and to the Right live stream and podcast, which happens on Thursdays, the Casual Friday live stream, which happens on Facebook on, on oh, I'm sorry, Up and to the Right is on Thursdays, Casual Friday is on Friday, and then uh, articles that we publish, all action-oriented things, and those are all complementary or what I call introductory resources, so uh, potential customers and business owners can get uh, kind of a feel for who we are and, and uh, how we operate. And then we have the professional services, which is uh, goes through five basic categories where we have fixes, which can be an hour. You know, I have this specific problem. Um, ha have you experienced this? Yes, we, here's, here's a resource for you. Um, you might have upgrades where you're keeping business cards on your desk, but you want to have uh, your customer or on your phone and you want your customer database to be available to your whole company. So you implement a CRM. You might think of that as an upgrade. You might need to do an overhaul, which is where you've got something that has been working for a while, but you realize it's not going to scale and you, you need to improve it. You might have a production system that you're running and uh, you need to scale it so that you can deliver that next 10,000 instead of 150 of whatever you're doing. Uh, and then we have ground up development. If you're, uh, and this really is more about the founders and the, and the startups is, is I, I have this idea, but I don't have any business operations set. I don't, I don't even know really what that means. How do I build a business operation so that I can, deliver this product, create these prototypes, go look for capital, whatever it is that we need to do. And then finally, I have the 321 exit program, which is, is basically, you've been doing this for a while, you realize, oh my gosh, I don't want to do it forever. 
And that doesn't mean we don't love what we do, but uh, oftentimes small businesses are very integrated with their founders. And if you want to transfer that, whether you want to transfer it to your heirs or you want to transfer it to uh, Google, uh, you have to be able to separate the founder from the, from the business. And so the 321 exit program is we look at, it's a long-term program where we look at the uh, company in general, the operations and, and the processes and the products. And we say, okay, how do we sequentially pull the founder out of the business? So those are the things that we do. What do you get when you work with us? Um, we do provide documented guidance. Uh, again, I go back to this action-oriented theme. Everything we do is action-oriented. It's built around your business. So we're not talking about cookie cutters. We're talking about really digging into how things work for you. Um, what is your business culture? Uh, what are your strengths and how do we leverage those to create processes and procedures and whatever it takes to implement that next thing um, and then have a practical way to measure it. And I think it's really important when you're doing a change to a business, whether that's a quick fix or an overhaul or even building something from the ground up, if you're gonna, if you're gonna invest the time and the energy and the, and the resources into that, you need to have a way to measure it so you know it's working. Um, the next step in that is that we have to implement things well. So uh, I think a lot of people do okay planning an implementation and, and less okay communicating an implementation. Uh, and then finally, there's the, the action, how do you implement it? And so we will help you plan it for the long-term, communicate it. You can't have a company meeting on Monday and change the way you're doing your accounting system and then four months down the road expect people to have changed. So what is going to be different in your business four months down the road so that that operator, whoever it is, whatever they do, knows to do something different then versus at the Monday morning meeting. And for small businesses, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So we like to pull that together and then follow, finally having follow-up where we schedule, you know, a month out three months out, six months out, whatever makes sense for the scope of your project, how are we going to get back together and make sure it's achieving the goals that you had anticipated when you started the project? Um, and then real quick, I have the quick answers uh, program, which is, you know, if somebody emails me with a quick question, I want them to not have the barrier of thinking every hour, every minute is going to get billed. Uh, so if there's some kind of, if there's a quick, literally a quick question, I like to make sure people have a barrier-free environment to get that question answered. Um, of course, with boundaries. We're all friends here. We all know that at some point you've got scope creep and, and we can't do that. So, um, but I don't want a quick question to go unanswered because somebody's afraid of it. Um, so thank you. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. That's the end of my presentation. Um, oh, well, I guess this is the end of my presentation call to action. Um, so contact us to schedule some time to talk about how you'd like to improve your business and then the uh, phone number and email. And again, uh, go back to my ask slide. Jenna, I hope I kept it under uh, six minutes. I couldn't do it for less than eight when I was doing it before. You, you got about 7.30. We'll go okay oh, with this. You're, nice. you're doing okay. <laughs> Too bad. I'm, I'm not quite as strict on Zoom as I am in, in real life. Um, I may get there at some point, but it's a little more complicated because I can't be waving in the back of the room to y'all while you're presenting. Well, and I, I did have the, the music story that I threw in there too. So. <laughs> so comments and feedback for Stephen. Uh, it's nice and I appreciate you getting us uh, after your first presentation on on how to do some good Zoom calls, it's nice to have that background and feedback from you about what your actual business is. Uh, I appreciate that, Stephen. So, any comments or feedbacks? Feedbacks. Wow, is that a word? No. Okay. Uh, coming from the community in that regard. So, asking, is the value proposition for businesses clear? And y'all can either volunteer or you can get voluntold. I think there's a huge value proposition. I just jumped in. I'm sorry, Jana. You're great. I have to raise my hand and everything. Um, I think there's a huge value thing um, going with this, Stephen, because, I mean, like what we're working with in terms of all the change that we've gone through to work online, et cetera, when companies don't have processes in place, then I, 
I've seen this and we we've, we've had to unfortunately work through a lot with some of our clients. If they don't have processes in place when there's a situation like what we're going through, the fault line is really obvious. And so the processes that I feel feel really comfortable. I used to complain about the processes at MAPR and be that account executive business salesperson that was always like kind of chomping at the bits for too many processes. I think I'm in love with what you're talking about. Um, quick question. I like the quick answers program, having worked with attorneys. Um, anyone who's ever done anything with attorneys would like that. Um, I, I was a little bit curious as to testimonials in your track record. I think that that might be something, maybe I missed it, but I just would like to know more about what your background is and also your testimonials of people that you've already kind of helped through this process or in, or in the process of helping. Yeah, so that's a fair question. Uh, like I said, I've been, uh, I started my first business in 1985, I think. Um, and so I've been doing small business and small organizations throughout that entire time. Um, I do run another business called Directed Energy. So, so this, is, this is my, I'm graduating to um, doing beyond 50% full-time or more time and, and moving, pulling myself ironically out of the other business. So uh, I don't have... Uh, a lot of experience that I'm I'm going to be able to share in terms of saying, oh, I've got these 27 customers who have written testimonials for me, uh, but I recognize that as a very important uh, element of what I need to do going forward. But I appreciate your feedback. I think that you know, just a, a follow up comment. I think that one thing you could do is um, with that background and strength as you get ramped up and are going forward. I think you could consider yourself the face of the brand and go ahead and use testimonials in the early, early stage that say, Stephen sliced bread, he's done all of this, we've worked with him in this institution. I think that's, mm -hmm. as you transition, you can go ahead and do that. That's how mm -hmm. I would coach you. That, that's great, thank you very much. All right, Natalie, uh, um, you, your turn yep. here. Uh, sure, hey Stephen, thanks for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I think along probably the same lines where Janelle was saying is you need to stress get what is the value that you are bringing or or beyond 50 percent there's a lot of players in these kinds of spaces and you know consulting obviously and it's getting harder <laughs> these days um so you've got that experience so you have to focus on what it is that it that you know you're representing and as janelle said maybe it's, it's you the face of the the company and give examples what are outcomes that some of your clients have seen what are you know results what what have they improved as a result of using you you know etc you got to show that you know what do clients want to get out of you rather than somebody else i mean obviously you're you know there's a level of competition so uh i'd, I'd, I'd stress more of the con concretely what are they getting absolutely okay thank you yep. great any other particular feedback for steven this morning i have some um <clears throat> i will hey well. hi um so I run Zentainer, which is currently a little three-person company that uh, I think we fit in your target market as that like small sort of regional startup. Um, I think, I one, I would double down on all the things that were already said about like being able to prove your worth. Um, and I'd say one of the things that goes with that, um, you would call that like, these aren't cookie cutter solutions, like they're... Um, solutions that are specific to your business. Um, and I know that I had a hard time just believing that as like, okay, so then either you have to have super deep knowledge of my business, or you need to have been in the same situation that I'm in right now, or um, that isn't true in some way. So like, I would love to see either like why that is true or like I, as a business owner, am totally cool with cookie cutter solutions as long as they actually apply to me. <laughs> so I, don't know, I would say take that and maybe work it in a way that fits. Okay, um, I can speak to that just a little bit, uh, but I appreciate the feedback. Uh, it, I think the. And, and I'll, I'll try to find a way to articulate this a little bit better in, in the presentation. But I think that the reality is that, that cookie cutters 
my experience has been that cookie cutters work until the heart and soul of the organization decides that they don't. And, and so, and that means, you know, the, the culture, you can't always cookie cutter a solution onto a culture. And, and so when we talk about that, how, how do I, I, I don't know your business. You're absolutely right. But how do I get in there and say, okay, how do we make this? And, and you may, maybe a hybrid approach would be appropriate. So you take a cookie cutter from, from, you know, some standardized solution, but how do you make it work in the environment that, that this specific business owner needs? So um, I will, I will definitely look at that. Thank you. Great. Any last minute comments or thoughts for Stephen? All right, I appreciate it. Stephen, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, Jenna, there's, uh, Obrina, are you looking for making a comment? Yeah, I was actually Okay, say, sorry, because uh, I, I keep seeing her raising her hand physically, not on the... Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. um, Stephen, I would say if you're looking at providing more of a personalized tailored service, your target market is going to be the ones who have outgrown the cookie cutter solution and that's not clear in the messaging so i would tell i would just step up and say that out front like that that's what you're you're going for that that you've outgrown those processes and you have tried all of the you know you know cookie cutter template resources maybe even used all of your free resources and now you're trying to tailor and customize for specific things related to your needs. So. That's great. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. And Natalie, thank you for catching that. Um, so I want to move us into our last section that we do every week uh, is who had a win this week, who has uh, needs a little support or some help or who is got a res who has I can speak really um, who has a resource that we should probably all know about right now so Natalie will get you started and then Katrina Natalie you're gonna have to unmute and Damn. there's your bingo ah. card Jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just posted it on the chat uh, in case you haven't seen so tilt Jennifer Henderson runs that they're looking for a product manager so if anybody's interested, there's a position open there. So reach out to, uh, to Jennifer. There's the LinkedIn um, uh, link, sorry, <laughs> sounds stupid, uh, in the chat if you want to look at that. Um, so I know there's many people looking for work. So if somebody thinks they fit in there, do so. Great, thank you. Katrina? Okay, good morning, everybody. I actually have a little bit of both. So I have a win and a resource I, I might need that could be helpful. Um, the win is that I got approached by someone that is actually doing a podcast completely focused on different types of masterminds. And she approached me and wanted to talk specifically about my creative mastermind and how I run that, what I do, how I approach that specifically to support creative people. So that was really a nice surprise and I appreciated that. Um, the other part of my life is that if you don't already know, I'm the communications director for the Horse Tooth International Film Festival. We are officially going virtual for 2020, as are a lot of other events. We do have some ideas for what we can do to put some of the rundown online, like on YouTube. But that's like our very basic, like, hey, we know we can at least get all of this up on YouTube. But if anyone has any other ideas for technical solutions about how we can create a more rich experience, because a large part of the festival is also getting creative people to come together and connect and meet each other. Um, and we aren't really 100% sure what resources may be available. Maybe there's new platforms we don't know about. But as we're building that for 2020, uh, the festivals in September, um, it would be really, really great to get some additional resources now so we could start working with that and planning around that. Fantastic. Katrina, will you do me a favor and put your email address in the chat box so if people have ideas they can connect with you. And I'm going to move us to Janelle. What have you got for us today? Um, first, a win. Um, we got started with KL Owen. You guys might remember um, Brandon Owen pitched to the group and we got started helping them with um, their social media campaign. We're tiptoeing in and they're expanding their market into Texas. 
and he's also looking for investors. So I'm really excited about their progress. It's just amazing to have seen him come through this and now to be um, helping them is just huge and I'm so excited for it. So I want to thank you guys for just being who you are and being here, Jana. Thank you so much. Also wanted to but, talk I'm about- I'm going to butt in for just a second. For those of you who don't remember, Kale Owen is the folks who won the Pitch NoCo competition this past startup week. So continue, Janelle. They were awesome. Thank you so much, Jana. Um, and also Appendance, another Pitch Competition winner. Um, Jenny Morse, is. this is a resource. She's getting ready to launch um, a business writing course that will be both synchronous and asynchronous. That is synchronous in that she will have a coaching element to it, but it's also an online course that you have daily um, classes. We're helping her through the, um, the award that we gave with um, our agency in Biz West. Um, they won a $20,000 award that would be a saturation award. And so we're really excited to be getting started in May, June, and July to help Jenny promote her business. And so that's just a huge win. You guys will be seeing more about it is with Biz West. Um, so if you're not subscribers, I will suggest that maybe you do that. And I also know that Jenny has five subscriptions to give away. So maybe hit her up for one of those. Um, but it, it's going to be a really good course. And so now with us all being virtual, I think that if you have some challenge with your writing, it might be something worth looking into. It's pretty reasonably priced. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Janelle. Very excited about that. Abrina, am I saying that correctly? Yes, brief for Perfect. short, if it's helpful. First, I wanted to thank Megan Anderson for turning me on to 1MC. I am like so in geek love with all of the stuff that's going on right now. So um, thank you for the community and I look forward to learning more with everybody. Um, and then secondly, I am a coach, I'm a career coach, consultant, and I started off with a plan to uh, do an LMS myself. I built a WordPress site and everything. And I'm a onepreneur and that's just insane. I cannot manage that <laughs> successfully. And so I'm trying to find a membership course platform combination that's simplified. And if anybody has any feedback or advice, cause like handling the four or five different technologies to bring the leads in, measure the leads, and then work with this stuff while they're in program is overwhelming to me. And so I'm just trying to find a simpler way and maybe there isn't. And so I'd look if somebody's experienced at it and knows that it's not simpler, then I would like to know that so that I can kind of um, lay to bed the, the chaos of trying to decide what my delivery mechanism is. I actually think uh, Jenny, who we just spoke about with, with Janelle was just talking about, she's presenting at Sage this morning, so she's not with us. She's usually here. Uh, but if you'll send me your email address, I will get you two connected because she had the same problems and found someone uh, to be working with to help her with some of those pieces and is part-time and very affordable in some of those areas. So uh, it might be a good idea to connect with her. And then if there are other folks, uh, please feel free to connect with Jenny as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, E, Imana, and I got to remember if I'm pronouncing that right. Yes, you did. Fantastic. Um, if you don't know, I started my martial arts studio two weeks before the lockdown. So my win is that last Friday, I had four students actually tested for the first belt. So I had grandparents, parents all attended the Zoom meeting. And so that's a big deal because they hung around. Um, and uh, this could be a resource. I'm offering free Taekwondo classes for moms the whole month of May. So... If you want to try out your mom, any age, let me know. And I'm also in that onepreneur feeling totally overwhelmed phase. So I will also hit Jenny up. You are, you are not alone in that by <laughs> any means. Steven. Yeah, just real quick for the people, there's a couple of comments about the, the learning management systems. Um, maybe we could take that offline. I'm actually building a course right now and I would love to talk to other people who are kind of swirling around that maelstrom um, and maybe Jana you could connect us uh, uh, but I would I would love to be in a subgroup and and talk about that if anybody's interested so just to add on to that I was with um, another group this morning I was kind of overlapping cause trying to maximize my time I'm going to put out a meeting request to a number of individuals who are all exploring that option 
Um, I've done a lot of research in some of the tools, but I'm looking for things that have been operationalized so that we can see them. And so if you're up for that, I'll post it into the group and we'll all get on a Zoom and just share information. That would be awesome. I would love it. That would be fantastic. Great. All right, Mike, if you can close us out with one quick thing uh, since we're right at 10 o'clock here and then we will wrap up for the day. Yeah, super quick, just to follow up last week, remember I said we had just started with the hospital association on Tuesday afternoon and we got our first call Wednesday morning. Uh, that has now turned into an order. And so we've had another contact or two as well. So we're excited to see if that's gonna take off or not. That is fantastic. And Greg, one last moment, cause I have a feeling I know what you need, but let's hear it. I'm free. You're free? That's, I'm celebrating that I am free of all jobs. So uh, I am available for work if people need some volunteering, um, communication, promotion, things like that. I'm willing to help out in any way that I can. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, let go. And so if you know of stuff that's out there, would love the contact. We'll be absolutely happy to send whatever I can your way. I so appreciate all the things that you've done with the BBB and as an individual. So looking forward to helping in the best way we possibly can for that. Thanks guys. All right, so we are at 10.01. We're gonna say goodbye for this week and we will check in with all of you next week. Thanks for being here. Go forth, have a great week and we'll talk soon. Good Take to care, see everybody. you all. Bye, everybody. Bye.